Welcome to Treyer Wilderness. My name is Tammy Treyer. If you're new to our channel, my family and I have been living off grid for a decade in northern Idaho. And uh, we are gearing up to start over and build our second off grid homestead from the ground up. And we will talk more about that. But I hope you guys are all doing well today. I am a little late. I normally go live at about 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, and today it's 11.30, um, which I will also explain why that has happened. It has been a crazy, this is a crazy week. It is going to be, even continue to be more of a crazy week uh, with all that we have going on. I'm going to share this live video quickly on our YouTube or Facebook page real quickly so others can join in and then we will get going here because I just want to get them on here as well. So um, I hope you guys are all doing well. We had some crazy, crazy winds on Monday and got very lucky. The sawmill went down the track on its own again um, and just it's a miracle that we didn't have any trees come down on anything give me one second here okay they've officially been invited okay so this week is a wild ride. We are gearing up right now and working our way out of the homestead, our original homestead. We sold that back um, in on Good Friday, and we didn't sell that. God did. God sold it through this chaos and, and through the pandemic and to the perfect buyer who has uh, allowed us to caretake it for him. And uh, we are working our way out of the house with the renovations that were requested and um, getting ready to set up tents on this property and start building our off-grid tiny log cabin. And uh, I've been saying it's a traditional cabin. There have been other cabins like this built. Um, it's not your standard traditional cabin where your logs are horizontal. Our logs are going to be vertical. We will be building this um, with our own two hands, milling the lumber and the logs, which we will be harvesting and um, doing the whole process. So it's a pretty awesome adventure. Um, the seasons are definitely changing. We had frost yesterday. It was um, mighty cold last night also. And right now um, in Northern Idaho and the Pacific Northwest, having a fire of any kind, even just uh, sparks coming out of a, a regular chimney can be very dangerous right now, as dry as it is, we haven't had rain. So we will be climbing into our uh, sub temperature sleeping bags and calling it good. So we will be in the outdoors, might even do some uh, hammock sleeping depending how things go and where we set up our camp here. But I see some of you joining in. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I am praying for you. How is your foot? Miss Shelley got stung by a bee and she has adverse effects to bee stings, which is not good. Um, how did you get the swelling down? I know you said this morning that you didn't have any swelling in your foot, which is awesome, but pain is not good. Um, they are definitely not nice, and we've had an onset of them as well here. I want to show you guys some things quick and show you what we've been up to and what we've got going on. I want to first introduce you. Ooh, it's going to be hard to see today. I didn't think about that out here. I don't know if you can see. I'm catching the reflection over there. I don't know. Oh, I'm bummed. Maybe I'll have to do it another way. Let me do this. Bear with me a second. I want to show you some stuff that we've got going on. Sorry, the camera is so close. Let's see. There we go. That's a little better. I think maybe if I get it at the right angle. There we go. That is Olaf. That is one of our new kittens. I wanted to show you some of these pictures. You know me in my heart. That is, I threw yeast in a in my bread pan, uh, my pottery dish to make um, pizza on Friday night, and that's the shape it went into. This 
is the man cave. As I said, we are working our way out of the old house. So you can see the new flooring and everything is just getting all fine tuned. And just to show you a little bit of the house that my man built. There is Olaf again. This cat thinks it's a dog. It is the funniest thing. I love this cat. We have another cat called Fluffy, which is actually this cat's dad. And they are both uh, like Persian long-haired cats. And this cat has blue eyes. It's just too cool. Okay, so that is the view from my back porch. That was my lantern on the back porch. That is my big girl. As you all, some of you know that she had surgery. She had cancer surgery and had cancer removed from her leg. And there is her big bed, but she, I don't know why, but this big oaf curls up really tight in this little dog bed. It's the funniest thing. So there she is sitting in it. Oop, let me go back in here. This was some of the other work we've been doing. Uh, the kitchen um, was one of the last things that we were uh, planning to do for ourselves, and um, it is now being finished. Oh, I'm hitting the buttons too hard, I guess. Okay. Let me show you something. I'm going to go backtrack. Okay, so there is the cabinets. This cabinet in particular got put into place. That is the spot right there, if you can see it. And now I'm going to go back. Can you see that? Is that not crazy? I'm leaving my mark all over this house. It's so cool. <laughs> Just to show you what we've been dealing with, they removed a lump right here, and this was all stitched, but there's not enough skin on this part of the leg, so um, it tore apart, and they were unable to stitch it back up. They had stitched it once in the back of my car and when I first picked her up, and uh, it got infected. So then it started to weaken and the stitches tore again. So they chose to leave it go. It is actually healing, but it does look pretty nasty. And that is about like that big. It, it is as big as it appears. It's large. It's very large. She also had stuff taken off of her hocks here. Or, and they left a, put a slit in behind on the back of her leg so that these stitches wouldn't tear, but it didn't. Uh, really work very well. We were a little disappointed with uh, them this round, but um, try to keep this dog laying is like darn near an impossibility, but she had stitches all in here and up in here and back in here, and they've all been removed. Uh, Mountain Man removed those. So everything's looking good. It is starting to heal around here, but our concern is going to be keeping that clean once we get up here because this is still open and seeping. So hoping by the end of the week that that gets a good uh, scab on it and that we'll have better chance of keeping it clean once we're in the tent. So that's what I just left and that's why I'm late today. Um, that's my living room or was my living room. <laughs> Those are all the cabinets that are going in today. I had to quickly do dishes because the sink and the stove are being uh, removed today so that the cabinetry can go in there. And um, we will be doing a concrete countertop um, for in that kitchen. So it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we're hoping to, we're basically working our way out of here. We're going to start doing the flooring. Once the flooring is in, we will do stair treads on the stairs and then we will be out. Right now, the only thing of ours that is in the house is the refrigerator some of the kitchen stuff right here we just have like a kind of makeshift kitchen i moved the bulk of the kitchen up to the container yesterday and the day before and i'm setting up camp up here for my outdoor kitchen and our bedroom so once this flooring goes in we will be moving our stuff out and be in the tents so this is the i wanted to show the loft um this is the loft up above that picture is kind of at an angle but um just so that you can see how nice we we were going with the light wood this is all milled lumber 
beams are all milled. This is T111 on the ceilings and on the walls here. But the rest of the lumber we milled uh, for the cosmetics of the house. And the mountain man built all this railing. We did the toppers and the, the um, handrail um, in a dark Kona stain uh, because we wanted that dark to pull out the knots and the characteristics of the wood. So the floor is also dark. The stair treads will be the same color. So it's a really nice mix and all just uh, complements each other. That is from the she cave looking out into the loft and this is a little bit of a bomb oh, little bit of a bomb yet I'm still working out of here so those are the things that I'm working out of and some of our photos and things that are still on the wall are going in this tote here so that'll all be moved out tomorrow but I'm I've actually got web work to do so um, my battery is dying as you can see so Okay, so I'm going to jump back and spin this around. I know you guys have been commenting. All right, let me get this back in here. Whoa, there we go. I see a bunch of you joined. I'm excited and I'm sorry I'm late. I'm trying to figure out why this isn't charging. There we go. It's attached, but it's not wanting to charge. Because I need that. Let's see if I can... Okay, so let me go back to the comments here. Miss Shelly, I had asked you how your foot was, so let's go there. Shelly says, it is sore, but I was able to keep the swelling down by using an onion. Awesome, awesome. I took an antihistamine, then soaked in cold water with Epsom salt, and then put on onion, an onion on it. Ah! <laughs> there we go. Uh, put an onion on it for an hour. Guess there is a white spot where I got stung, but no redness. Oh, well, I am glad you're not swollen. Um, if you have any drawing salve, you might want to put it on there. Sounds like it might have some toxins in there or maybe part of the stinger. Um, no, Miss Mona says, God bless you and your dog. Why, thank you. Um, right back at you. Uh, Tammy says, good afternoon. I couldn't get a signal at the clothesline. <laughs> I'm sorry to pull you away from your comfort spot. <laughs> Shelly says, I have my last four pints of winter slaw in the water bath. Awesome. You've been busy. I've seen you've been busy. That's awesome stuff. She says, wow, that looks good. Love the heart. I know. Is that not funny? Um, Christopher's here. Christopher was here before. Um... He didn't know the extent of my hearts. We've been sharing some of the things of, as I've been packing them away and uh, some of the stories. And um, I said how everybody tends to get cursed with my hearts because once they're around me and they see me seeing the hearts, next thing you know, they're seeing hearts too. Well, he unpackaged the cabinets at yesterday and I walked over and I was like, no way. I mean, that is a perfect heart. So I called him over and I asked if he had seen that and he just shook his head. He's like, I can't believe that. <laughs> and the new homeowner had been watching our materials and stuff and he said that he's going to take over my heart. So I don't know if he's in route now or not. Um, I haven't, I sent him a message yesterday and showed him the heart on the cabinet. So pretty funny. I am definitely leaving my brand behind. That is just, it cracks me up. Uh, Shelly says that open area really does not look bad. The area looks healthy and if you can keep it clean, will heal, but very slowly. Yeah, exactly. All those little bumps are actually, um, evidence of healing. And around the edge, you could see that it was like curling under and creating like a, um, scarring. So yes, it is really good. And it had been seeping a lot before. It's not seeping near as much. So it's, it is definitely progressing. And this dog is amazing. She has got, she's just so good. She lays down and just sits there waiting, lays there waiting for us to work on her. And uh, we've been putting a spray on it, which actually has cayenne in it, which stings. And I can't even begin to imagine how that's got to feel on that open wound. And she just lays there. It has cayenne, comfrey, um, trying to think what else all is in that plant. We also were putting plantain on there. Uh, plantain is another good healer, and that's good for bee bites too, uh, Shelly. Um, and there's other stuff in it too. I can't think what it is, but really good healing spray. Uh, just a 
have an, any uh, bacterial on that. Uh, she does keep it covered. The vet wrap really helps with that. We tried gauze and she got at it. And with everything we've got going on, it's too hard to babysit. It's hard enough keeping her away from the stairs. She's not supposed to do stairs. And I keep going up and down. She wants to follow me. So it's it's quite a challenge. Just like reminiscent of babysitting or raising young children. So <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> So let me see here. Uh, oh, Shelly said, that's too funny, Tammy R. With the clothesline, I believe is what she was saying that way. It is called, oh yes, granulation. It is healthy. Thank you. I could not remember for life of me what that was called the other day. Healthy skin starting to form. Yeah, and the, you see that a lot on horses too. Sometimes on horses, it'll get really big and become like a, almost like a big wart on the side of a horse's leg where they get open wounds and things. So that is what that is doing. And um, best way to describe it is it just looks like a brain forming in there. It's very um, granular, but also lumpy. So, so yeah, so that's why I was late today. I had to wash our dishes. Um, I had made lasagna the other night and um, it, it is really, honestly, guys, it is insanely crazy trying to keep up right now. We are going in so many different directions, but God is really with us, really helping us push us through. I mean, there's a lot of work, but we haven't been running into struggles. It's been very smooth, and um, God is definitely answering prayers, uh, and, and uh, the shuffle is definitely great. Austin was here for the weekend. He came on Friday, and... Um, left on Sunday afternoon and he is flying today actually this is pretty cool with his school uh, they take him up in the plane and uh, travel over the area there and uh, so excited for him he's going up in the plane today and things are going very very well for him he's found his groove he really really enjoys his classes and uh, but just keep us all in your prayers uh, the mountain man had a rough day yesterday just a lot of overwhelm and uh, rightfully so, you know, looking at all the things that need to be done. But what's really awesome is Christopher is well versed in construction. So he can be, he actually hung the upper cabinets, most of them yesterday. And, you know, you can just send him off on his way doing one project while the mountain man is doing another and I'm doing another one. So I'm just kind of following behind them and uh, been doing some writing and web work as well. And I was praying yesterday. This is pretty cool. I was praying yesterday for God's continued abundance and just to guide us um, so we can make it through this build and still um, be able to continue paying our bills through winter and so forth. And because it's hard, you know, we're, we're, we're working on that house. We are building this house. There isn't time to really be working. Um, I am definitely, you know, um, doing my best to keep articles and websites going. But I prayed that yesterday morning and I got up here to um, unload a load of uh, stuff. There is a hornet, ah, sorry, um, to unload a, a truckload of stuff. And my phone chimed twice and it was really awesome. Both of them were people, friends of mine, that were letting me know that they have people that want me to design websites for them and they are both willing to wait till, you know, November. So that's just awesome, you know, to be able to line that stuff up. And God definitely an answers prayers. He knows our needs. He, he covers us. He protects us. So it's really, really awesome. And I hope you guys are seeing that throughout this pandemic and, and your journeys in, in your life this year. I'm sure all of you will agree this year is just flying by. And um, how are things going for you guys? You know, at this point, things are still upside down, but uh, it just doesn't, I don't even know how to explain it. I don't even know how to put it into words. Um, we're so f far and unattached from it all with everything we've got going on. So it's really not affecting us. How is it affecting you guys? Are you still experiencing things? Um, and I know many of you, Tammy's uh, daughter and son-in-law, uh, drove through snow the other night. So the seasons are changing fast as well. Like I said, we had a frost the other night. 
and the temperatures have been really dropping. Uh, Monday with the heavy winds, um, it was insane. It started out really warm in the morning and ended up being like 60 uh, midday because of the winds blowing the front end. So, um, you know, it's beautiful out today, but um, you can definitely feel the change in season. So what are you guys up to right now? What are you experiencing? And, um, you know, it's kind of funny. It's preparedness month. September is preparedness month. And I've always educated on that, shared different things. But you know me very well, those of you that are joining and, and those of you that are, you know, watching the replay if you're new. We talk about preparedness every month. Um, we don't just focus on preparedness in September. We focus on preparedness every day. Every day we are planning ahead. Every day we are focusing forward, faithfully forward. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's just like, like anything else, you know, Christmas, you celebrate the birth of Christ, but you know, we celebrate Christ every day. So it's all perspective. It's all how you look at things, but it's important that if you are not focusing on preparedness, that you definitely start diving in. And if that means that you do it in September, that's great. But you really need to be focusing forward. You really need to be planning ahead. You really need to be planning for the unknown, um, preparing for anything that could come our way. And, um, you know, when we moved out here a decade ago, people didn't understand what we were preparing for. You know, they do. What, it, what are you preparing for? That was 10 years ago. Um, we just watched a comedian, too. Um, the, the show was from 2003, and he was talking about the gun laws and different things. And it's like, you know, that was already happening, you know, 13 years ago. No, 17 years ago. You know, so... When you see things that are awry and you know your future's uncertain and you see a lot of change and not always the change for the good, it's time that you look out for your family. It's time that you think out of the box. It's time that you focus on how you can be prepared regardless of what comes your way. And there's times where stuff does come and it's completely out of our control. We can't control it. We can't prepare for it. And that's where the, the supernatural takes over and where God has our backs. But we really need to be doing our part. So many people feel that, you know, particularly Christians feel that, you know, you shouldn't be preparing too much because then you're taking it away from God. But God really wants you to do your part. He meets you and, and, and he knows, he knows our every need. That's why today, that's what we are talking about, that he knows our every need. He knows where we are able to get to. He knows what we are able to afford. He knows our hearts. He knows our fears. He knows our desires. He knows our, our basic needs. And, you know, when you go through a tough time, you really learn to and are able to discern and see how much God really does love you and how much he really does provide because he provides down to the idiest, bittiest details. And regardless if we've been prepared, you've been preparing or not, he will take care of you. But I want to encourage you to step up. Because he does call us to be active. He does call us to be diligent. He does call us to um, work the plow. And we need, we need to do our part. So in doing our part, I feel, oop, I feel that <laughs> it was a big bumblebee. That one wasn't going to get me. Um, just surprised me. So I got to sit different. There we go. Okay. So how are you? Um, stepping up and how are you making an effort to be more prepared and to think ahead and what are some things that you have done this year that are things that you haven't normally done in the past as a result of all that's going on I'm really curious <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there's a bump yep right there bump big bumblebee climbing on my chair 
I'm sitting next to my comfrey. My comfrey is like right over there. And actually, I'll show you this too. <laughs> There's my bathtub. My sink is right there as well. They're both porcelain, so that's their resting spot till they need to move into the house. But <laughs> so if I get really hot, I can plug it and put some cold water in there. <laughs> I could have done that last week. It got really hot in the sun. Okay, so you guys are talking. Let's see here. Okay. Shelly says it was so smoky here yesterday, the mountains could not be seen at all. I saw your pictures. Yeah, we had that, we had that a couple times um, recently. And on Monday, quite a few fires started. Miss Deb, I saw she messaged me this morning and I did not get a chance to look at it before. You know what? I might quick check it out now. Um, by the way, those pictures were for Angie this morning. Angie has been asking for pictures and it's hard to do it while I'm while I am live, but I wanted to see Deb messaged me yesterday to share with me that on Monday there was arson fires started up there and Deb's area burned to the ground several years back. Uh, I want to say like four years ago, five years ago. And um, it was really bad, really, really bad. And uh, it's just dry everywhere here in Washington and Idaho. But um, I just want to see how they're doing. She asked to pray because the fires. She says, prayers for all of you and prayers for all here with horrific fires in my former school bus route area. And then some, some folks lost homes and a few animals, but God spared many miraculously. Yeah, sadly praying for the evil ones who, who intentionally start all these fires in our areas this summer. It's just crazy. It's just crazy to think that people would do such a thing. But there are those people out there and the enemy is, you know, working hard. He's working hard right now. So, um her in her praying for them that's huge too um but pray for the people with fires there's quite a few fires here in idaho as well um several hundred acres have burned in a multiple multitude of different places uh fairly close to us um so those winds monday just really escalated things so that was why deb had message for prayers um so keep everybody in prayer with the fires. The smoke we've been getting has just been from these other fires and it blowing in. It was really concerning the other day when it did blow in because it, it, all of a sudden it just appeared. It wasn't like it was there and it was there all day. It just suddenly appeared, but it was from the heavy winds. But, you, you know, you never know if something started close by that you need to be concerned about because it could be a fire starting here in this tinderbox. It would go quick, It'd go really quick. Mona says 31 early this morning. I believe it. It was it was a cold. I know it was cold last night because it was cold out in the porch last night. Tammy says we had a good frost Tuesday morning. Thankful I got most of my garden in. Good. I was that was my next question because I know you were crunching to get everything in. So crazy. So I feel we're gonna have an early winter. I did not say that near the mountain man because he would freak right now, but I do feel that. But you know, we moved into our previous house with a foot of snow on the ground and you know it'll be what it'll be that I know God will carry us through it. I'm I'm anxious for the experience. I honestly just loved that experience before we lived in a wall tent for eight and a half months. So right now we'll probably be living in it for month and a half. I mean, max, it would be two months at this point, but I'm thinking just a month and a half. This is a smaller structure. It does require more work, but, um, I think, I think that will be good. And I'm just excited for the experience. Um, Shelly says, I'm really trying to prepare for what is to come. I fear that there is going to be a food shortage due to no one being able to work on groups like they usually do on farms. Yep, exactly. They're shutting a lot down. California has shut a lot down. It's, uh, it's insane. And then with those bombings overseas, all that food, uh, they took out food. It just, that screams volumes to me. Um, Shelly says, we can pray to God for everything, but if we do not put in the effort to assist in what he is putting on your heart, yep, that 
then you are, are not listening. Exactly. And you know what? God nudges us. God nudges us for reasons. And when we are too busy or not comfortable with the nudges that he's putting forth and we disengage, we're definitely not working in his will. And um, truthfully, when you are working in God's will, it is absolutely, without a doubt, amazing to see his hand at work. And it is visible. Trust me, it is visible. When we slow down enough to see what he is doing around us and for us and through us, it's really, really amazing. And um, I just want to encourage you guys to put those two things together. You know, one or the other um, is, is good, but when you put the two together... And you are walking in his will, walking by faith, trusting in him, doing your part, and you have that relationship. That is the key thing. So many people, you know, I don't like the word Christianity so much. I don't like the word religion so much. It's a relationship. It is a relationship. Um, we are followers of the light. And um, that relationship is so amazingly incredible. And until you experience it wholeheartedly, you're not experiencing the full beauties of what God has to offer because that relationship is where it is at. I promise you. I promise you. I mean, that, that heart on that cabinet just says it all to me. That heart on that cabinet is him wrapping his arms in love around me and just showing me he's present, showing me that everything is going to be okay. And, you know, there's a lot of work to be done down there, but as they're working, I'm getting everything out. Uh, I'm organizing things uh, so that everything... I know that this 40-foot container is darn near jam-packed, but you asked me where one thing is, and I could find it. I know where everything is, and that's a key thing. We talked about organization the other week and, you know, and planning things out and being able to plan big projects and stay ahead of them. You know, it can be mind-boggling and overwhelming, but when you – this is part of, of also being prepared. I want to share this because this is something that I eliminated six, seven years ago. I've always been doing it, but I really buckled down because I hate doing something twice. I hate wasting unnecessary time. I hate not knowing where things are. And um, that's just part of my organizational makeup. That is one of the superpowers God gave me, and I am so thankful. Um, and so are the guys because as we're moving the kitchen, it has moved in varying forms like three to five different times now and as we're progressively getting more things out and uh, it's just funny they ask I know you know I know right where stuff is so and that's important um, because when you are preparing for the unknown if you are also organizing as you're preparing um, when you get into a situation, it makes it really easy that you don't have to go digging for things that you need. Sleeping bags, lanterns, batteries, whatever it might be. When you know where those things are and you are organized and you have them labeled, um, it is very helpful. Very, very helpful. Uh, it eliminates added stress in your situations and um, makes things flow very smoothly and really makes, can make an unfortunate or nerving situation somewhat pleasant because you are not having to go through that extra anxiety and panic and everything else trying to find your things. When it comes to planning a big project, when you can be like that and organize like that, it really, really helps um, just to be able to have things flow. And it's really awesome because the mountain man is pretty much like that as well. With his things, he knows where everything is. Like everything for us has a home. Now the mountain boy, on the other hand, was not blessed with that supernatural power. <laughs> and I've been trying to teach him that over the years. And when he packed up all his things, that his things are in the cabin, um, he's actually packed them like three different times because the first time he just shoved everything together. Second time he needed something. So I said, pause, 
start unpacking things, use your bed, spread things out, and start packing like things together and labeling them. So he did that. But then he got in a hurry to finish up and came back here this weekend and was looking for something. And all the stuff was together but one thing. And what was really funny to me is he had to like weave his way through the entire pile of stuff all the way into the back corner where he found this other thing that was shoved in another tote. And I said, now do you see the importance of why you keep everything together and you know where, that way you know where everything is and you don't have to go through this painful step of having to seek things. And granted, I know he's not the only one and I may be speaking to some of you too that are, are don't have that organizational superpower, which is perfectly okay because I'm sure your superpowers are something that I am lacking and, and you are able to help and benefit others with your superpower. It's just how it is. We, we don't all have the same gifts. We don't all have the same talents. Um, but we can learn from each other. And you teaching me how you nurture and improve your superpower will help me to nurture something I might be lacking in. So that's why I'm sharing this because really... That is one thing that makes this whole process so much nicer is having things organized, knowing that I've got all my linens from the house. The bathroom is packed up. All of those linens are clean and ready to go so that when I move into my new house, all I've got to do is put them on a shelf and start using them. My washing machine in my new house will be something that is going to need to be um, run in a special fashion, most likely with a generator. So it's not something I can just go in there and plug, on, uh, plug in and turn on whenever I want to. Um, just randomly, I've got to put some effort into it and, and go through some extra steps to do my laundry. I don't have to leave. I don't have to go to a laundromat. So I am blessed in that regard. And I'm blessed having it. But it's not something like you can just go into that room, shove a load and shove uh, laundry detergent in, in it and turn it on. I've got to go uh, around some different maneuvering. And, and the other thing is that isn't going to be a priority right off the bat, you know. So... I wanted to make sure with that in mind that I have all my linens washed, I have everything ready to go, um, and we can we can work around what we have to. And we might even be doing wash out here, you know, for that month and a half, uh, maybe setting it up outside, running it with a generator and uh, a gravity feed water setup. So I don't know, but I wanted to be prepared. And that's how my mind works. I think of all these things. I think of the preparation necessary. I think of all the foods that we need and that we'll be eating out of camp and the things that are, you know, things I won't be using on a regular basis. You know, I won't be making a shoe fly pie so I can pack up some of my stuff for that. You know, it's just an example because I packed up a whole bunch of different kinds of molasses that I use. Um, but I did keep my medicinal molasses handy. So... It's just thinking out of the box, thinking what you need for the present circumstances, thinking what you need um, to, um, for us to live in this certain situation. So for you guys, you know, thinking in a preparedness aspect, you know, what will you need in certain situations? What are the things in your area that are affecting you? Tornadoes, um, hurricanes, flooding, uh, heavy winds, wildfires, you know, we all are dealing with different things because we're all in different areas of the country. So when you think of these things and you start preparing for the things you need, um, it definitely makes situations a lot better when you are actually walking them out and you are experiencing those things that you've prepared for. You know, I agree with Shelly. I do believe that there is going to be stuff going on with our food. I think that uh, by us planning ahead. I know Diana um, got herself some uh, meat birds and uh, has chickens and is starting to um, prepare in a lot of different ways. Um, Kelly has had multiple animals and has been living that life uh, already and is uh, putting things up and in her, in her uh, root cellar and Shelly is dehydrating and canning whatever she can get her hands on right now and preparing for the winter as is Tammy and you know um, in addition to your food garden you don't you don't necessarily just have all your food but you also have herbals going on I know Tammy is raising a lot of and growing raising growing <laughs> a lot of uh, herbal plants and putting them up I'm actually heading back to 
the old homestead after this, and I'm gonna um, get some of our spearmint tea in. We've been drinking tea every day. It's a nice bonus and uh, keeping us hydrated because we tend to lack on drinking just plain water, so especially me. And um, just, just thinking of these things, um, I couldn't imagine not being prepared in our situation right now. Uh, because I look at that 40 foot container that is very well organized and if that was just shoved full, I mean, you'd have to unload the whole thing to find what you're looking for. And I know that there are people that do that. That would drive me absolutely insane because I don't, I don't want to waste my precious time on this earth doing stuff like that. So that's why I'm trying to encourage you guys label things, especially your canning stuff. You know, when you're canning and you put things on the shelf, everybody thinks, well, I'll remember what it is. But if you don't label them and put dates on them, you end up, you know, questioning your, uh, contents and their age. And oftentimes some things get wasted for that reason. So make sure that you're labeling things. That's why I label I have totes in that container that help have things very well labeled. We know where our hunting gear is. We know where our linens are. We know where my office things are. You know, it's very easy to lose things while you're moving, but we're very careful with that. We were very careful with that moving out here. And uh, we did a lot of canned goods and different things when we originally moved out here. But I've really tried to stay away from canned goods. Uh, Shelly and I have talked about this multiple times on, on these lives. Um, how uh, a lot of the uh, nickels and different metals in the cans will seep into your food. So I really, even when it's organic, I try to really stay away from that. So um, I'm doing a lot of freeze-dried and dehydrated things. And... Um, we're really keeping it simple with meat and potato kind of meals, stews, um, and soups. I'm using the sun ovens to make breads and uh, baked goods. Uh, these guys like to eat. So I made, I made a, what is it, 9 by 12 thing of lasagna the other night. And my two guys ate it in one sitting. <laughs> so that gives you a good idea. Um, kind of eaters I have. Um, so it, it does require thought. It does require planning. And when you learn how to do that in your day to day, you also learn how to do that in all of your situations, whether it's building a home, whether it's a project and renovations, whether it's gardening, whether it's preparing for your future. Um, I have talked about the food list and I did not get it guys. I'm so sorry. I am working on that. Um, but having an inventory of your food, knowing what you have, making sure you have plenty of what you use on a regular basis. I found out yesterday that I missed ordering cornmeal. So I need to get that ordered because I like to make sweet cornbread. And, um, that was the only thing I haven't ordered. So, um, being aware of that and, and going through your food, going through your inventory, uh, circulating your food and using up the oldest first so that you are continuing to uh, keep your food fresh but also not letting things spoil so I kind of jumped around there but let me go back here yeah Tammy says I agree with you about an early winter I know all the signs are there and you know it's gonna be what it's gonna be it's gonna be what it's gonna be hopefully we're not pooling logs in the snow I mean it makes them go faster but I don't want to be building in the snow but uh, it's definitely getting cooler and I do love the seasons this is my favorite season to be able to layer and and I just I love that so I am looking forward to stepping into that and getting away from these the heat um, it's funny I go through that phase I love the heat love the heat love the heat now I'm ready for the season to change I'm tired of the heat so um, Shelly says winter is going to be here way too soon this year yeah I know I know. So keep us in your prayers that it just kind of keeps going around us for a while <laughs> and that it's not too cold because you might find me in our videos walking around in my mummy uh, sleeping bag instead of clothing because I don't want to climb out of my sleeping bag because it's too chilly. <laughs> 
uh, with the renovations we are doing, we are able to use the washing machine, but the dryer is not able to be used as it is not vented. Okay. Yeah. So improvising. Exactly. I mean, right now my uh, kitchen sink, I think is going to end up out on the back porch. It's a utility sink. Um, that you guys have seen in my kitchen very deep it's i'm gonna miss it in a lot of ways i have a deep um porcelain sink going in our new kitchen um which i will be thankful for too um and this sink is certainly not going to get lost in the shuffle i'm sure we'll put it to use somewhere eventually maybe in the butcher shop or the outdoor kitchen where we will be doing canning outdoors but and maybe even i might be doing my wash in that while we're out here too i'm not sure it could be my uh wash washer so you just learn to, to adjust and uh, improvise and, and do different things as you need to. That's part of preparedness. That's part of learning how to uh, be prepared and how to roll with what is coming your way. Because when you are in a real situation, you need to keep it calm, you need to be able to roll with it, and you need to uh, definitely be able to improvise and utilize uh, different resources to get things done. Mona says guilty, and I saw that pop up. I think that was when I was saying about drinking water, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I struggle greatly with drinking enough water. That's just, I don't know what that is. I tend to just drink water when I'm really hot and really working out. Um, I need to really focus on that. And I could use your prayers. My body started doing some really weird things after we did the concrete and the um, holes because I really detoxed that day and I really pushed things um, that hadn't been worked for a while. And it caused my body to uh, really... Uh, rear its ugly head so i've been finally getting myself back on track i started doing bone broth and avocados this week and i fasted on monday and that really helped get my system back on track uh but i had so much inflammation as a matter of fact when i fasted on monday i lost over five pounds of, of fluid just from the inflammation that i was dealing with so um i'm finally feeling much better the other thing is we the big girl and I would walk every day, you know, at least two miles, if not five or more. It just depended on what was going on. And we haven't been walking. Um, and without walking her, I've got to try to babysit her while they're doing certain things. So it's just, it's not working. So I am really anxious to get back to my early morning walks and get out, especially now. I love this season. So that's part of it too, because when I walk, that really kept my system moving and kept things going. Well, hello, space girl. I just saw you jump on here. Hi, Laura. Um, she says, I agree, Shelly Passmore. We had an early freeze last night. Yep, so it's, it's, it's coming. It is coming. Uh, Shelly says, I live on Vancouver Island and it is a rainforest environment, so we get lots of rain in the winter, but we do get snow and most people around here do not know how to drive in the snow. Yeah, that's like the south um, here in the United States. Uh, when they get snow, it's usually Alabama, Georgia. The mountain man's experienced some interesting things there as well, um, just because they don't normally get a lot of snow. So yeah, I can see that. Ah, I can see that. Um, Laura says, I was blessed with 10 pounds of taco chicken meat. I'm pressure canning it today. Awesome. That's a good treasure. Good find. Oh, <laughs> Mona says, thank you for labeling my tea. Yeah, I'm a little anal, aren't I? <laughs> I was helping uh, Mona organize some things when they moved. And um, <laughs> yeah, I have a tendency to do that. Uh, I just like knowing what things are and also where to find things. It just, I, it drove me nuts when I was sick having to search for things. And mainly my biggest thing that I was always searching for was paperwork. Um, you know, paperwork would get put one place or another. I, I always had file folders, but sometimes things would just get um, displaced. And like I said before, I used to use a notebook and using that notebook, I'd have to flip through, flip through, flip through, keep trying to find where I wrote something and what month I wrote it in, I could kind of get a bearing on it. But as things are moving as fast as they are this year, 
It's like so hard. That's when I started using Evernote. So if you guys are not using Evernote, I highly recommend it. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote, sign up for free. They have a free program. It's not just temporarily free. It's a free program. Um, when you start getting really advanced and collaborating with other people and sharing notes with other people, then you end up on a paid plan, but I think it's like four ninety nine a month. It's not bad. Um, so I have the premium because I have I think I have like five or six thousand notes in that thing. It's amazing. And it's smart. It's it'll actually look for words on your photos even when you're searching for something. So it's very smart, very handy to have. And Workflow is another one I use right now as I'm working through my list of things that have to get done. Um, it's really nice because you can just swipe it and it uh, strikes through it and puts lines through your words so that you know that it's been completed and makes it really easy to maneuver. I do that with my shopping and my grocery list. I use Workflowy. Um, just a lot easier than using Evernote with their check. You can do check marking in Evernote and I do like that too. But um, I also like Workflowy that if I have a constant grocery list and it's pretty much the same, you know, if I have to run out for eggs, milk, whatever the, the main things might be, I can just re-swipe them and clear it once I'm done shopping and use it over again and not have to recreate it. So it just makes it nice. Um, but those are the things I use to help me stay prepared. Um, the other thing is what's really nice with Evernote. And many of you have binders, which I also highly recommend. When you are seeking out skills or say um, herbal recipes or even baking recipes, you can actually use something called Web Clipper both on your phones and on your desktops, laptops, and whatever's on the screen will be transferred to whatever's on that page, I should say, because stuff below the screen also gets copied and it moves it to Evernote so you can actually tag them as herbal recipes so that when you go to Evernote, look under all your herbal recipes, all your herbal recipes will be there. So, you know, the same as when you're using a notebook. Um, I don't have the time to print stuff out right now. There's certain things that I have printed out. Um, but I shove things into my Evernote and then print them when I have time available to print them and binder them. It's always good to have a hard copy because you never know with an EMP, we may lose our electronics, then they're toast and you don't have what you have stored in it. So printing them out and putting them in a binder is really wise. Um, putting your things in sheet protectors um, is a good idea. Um, but that is something you can do. Uh, I utilize my Evernote for my recipes now. If I find new recipes, rather than taking the time to write them down, I shove them into Evernote so that I can easily just use my phone when I'm making the recipes right now anyway. I will go back and put them on recipe cards so I have them, but when I'm in a rush like this, I don't wanna lose the materials, I don't wanna lose the information, so I store it, and, and that is a great way to do it. Um, but also having a binder on hand um, with, uh, instructions on how to do things. Maybe you want to learn to make cheese. Maybe you want to learn to make a salve um, and and you want to have that on hand. It's just it's no different than having good um, homesteading encyclopedias available. Um, having a physical library in your home is a really important preparedness um, skill and thing to do uh, because if we lose internet, if we lose those power, anything, you're going to have to fall back on your old timey skills. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by having those books on hand. So I know Shelly got her son a uh, homesteading encyclopedia for his new homestead. They're good to have on hand. They tell you how to butcher things. They tell you how to cook things. They tell you how to heal things. They tell you how to take care of animals. So having those things available to you um, and a re as a resource is a really good idea. Another thing um, as far as books go is having um, first aid books on hand. Uh, a lot of times when you're in the thrift stores, you can find old medical books, which I have quite a few of, and they are certainly good to have on hand. Um, I am thinking of a book and I gotta think of his name. Shame on me, I work with him, but I cannot think of his name right now. Um, I'll try to look it up while I'm talking. And actually, I am seeing that my battery is dying. I wanna share 
real quick something with you guys. Um, you know, I said earlier how God always knows our needs. Matthew 6, 8 says, Do not be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. And it walks you through, uh, pray like this, our Father in Heaven. So this is where it goes through explaining to you how to pray. But He knows what we need before we need it. And that is something that we need to really, really, really focus on is... Um, our relationship with God, praying to God, and realizing that He knows all of our needs. So even if you don't have that book, um, He'll place people in front of your life, in your life, at the time you need them, that will have the skills you need. Um, he really does work the supernatural in our lives, and He really is there and very present in everything that we are doing. Um, I had asked earlier, but I'm going to ask again. Do you guys feel at all affected right now by the coronavirus, by the pandemic, by the things that are going on? I feel that things have lightened up some, but I suspect that when we get closer to the election time that things are going to erupt once again. Um, and I know that in the background things are still, you know, still happening. Uh, but I'm also really trusting God for the outcome in all aspects of all of this. Um, he is definitely protecting his children. There's been a lot of revival through all of this. There's been a lot of people seeking God who were uh, heavily against God previously. So, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, people always say that, you know, nothing good comes from bad experiences. But that's so incredibly wrong because God brings beauty from the ashes and he does it all the time. So I see some of you guys' message. Let me look back here. Um, Tammy says, Evernote is great. Yes, it's, it's actually, I, it became my like right arm and the right, right and left brain in, in 2016. Laura says this time of year is great for stocking up on office supplies, notebooks for 25 cents. Ah, oh, very good thoughts with all the school sales and everything. You know, I wonder how that's going to be, how, you have to wonder what's going to happen moving forward with schools because right now so many schools are doing the online learning. Um, you have to wonder what our future looks like there and if we're going to end up having a lot of vacant school buildings and no one using them. Um, Laura says, yes, God is so good. I am being shown how to slow down and wait on God. Yeah, you know... We were just talking about that. Was that this morning or last night? Um, I, I, I love waiting on God. You know, when I feel hesitation in anything that I'm about to do, I don't do it. I pause. Because I feel that hesitation from me, especially being as bold as I am and stepping out um, and out of my comfort zone and doing different things, when I feel hesitation towards anything, anything and right now I'll give you an example I had stuff in my Amazon cart and I wanted to purchase it and I felt apprehensive about it so I didn't purchase it and I felt that was God telling me to just wait and and sure enough yesterday I was blessed with one of the things that was in my shopping cart so he nudges us clearly and for reasons, but oftentimes we are too much either seeking the instant gratification, the instant reward, or just, you know, taking care of what we feel we need to take care of. Even though we feel that nudge, we keep moving forward. I've learned greatly and very quickly to just wait on him because there is a reason he's telling me to wait. Mountain Boy is um, like that in a lot of ways where he is, he struggles with that. He struggles with waiting on God and God's timing. And he just recently experienced that with a need that he had and it just didn't work out. It kept not working out and I could see it. Um, you know, sometimes 
and I'm sure you can all agree that you've experienced this with your children. There are times when we are on the outside looking in, and even not just our children, but other individuals. You know, you're on the outside looking in, and you can see things very clearly where because they're so close to it, they don't see it. But I could see God was stopping his attempts every time. And I kept, every time it happened, I'd say, you know, I really see God telling you to wait. I really see God telling you to wait. And then, sure enough, the doors did open, and and it was time. But it's it's funny how that happens and how we need to learn to uh, wait on God's timing and trust in God's timing that there is reason in it. I'm going to stand up here a second and relocate because the sun is coming in here and I am cooking. So we're going to move back just a little bit back into the shade. And I'm going to move you with me. There we go. Okay, so. I love this thing. My copper water vessel. If you're interested in checking these out, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash copper H2O. These things are amazing. Um, antibacterial, antiviral, and Not to mention pretty. Mine's getting a patina now too, but the mountain man's got a patina really fast. <laughs> Shelly, do you have problems with copper? Do you get too much copper in your in your system? Because I know you have problems with nickel and different other metals. I put us in the shade here, but now I can't see the screen real good. So hopefully you can see me okay. <laughs> But I had to move. I was starting to cook. Okay, let's see here. Laura says, Amen. Beauty for ashes every day keeps me going. Yes, Amen. I see it all the time. Hey, Chad. Good afternoon. I'm glad you could join us. We are talking about preparedness and how God is good and provides and knows our needs before we know what they are and how he continues to bless and take care of all of us. And it's really awesome. And we need to keep focusing on that. Um, you know, as I was saying earlier, it is really easy to hit overwhelm in life. Um, some of you may be dealing with that with your garden and your abundance. You know, you hit a point where you hit that canning meltdown where you've been canning for so long and it's just overwhelming because it doesn't look like there's any end to it. But then next season, you can't wait to start up again. Um, you know, I know that there's a lot to be done both at our old homestead and at our new homestead, but I'm just seeing God's hand. I'm seeing things just miraculously and supernaturally happening and you know whatever circumstances you guys are dealing with right now I know God will carry you through I'm gonna I'm gonna read this um, this is more written in the in a situation where things are um, in a negative in in someone's life but the thing is, God knows regardless if we are going through a hard time or a bad time. And the thing is also, so often in life, most people go to, to God and look to God and look for that relationship when things are hard. And because things get comfortable when we're in a good place, um, we tend not to seek him during those times. I have learned that in that relationship, when you seek him every day, good and bad, the good, bad, and the ugly, Shane the Mountain Man is not here to do his little whistle, but um, seriously, that relationship is meant to be a constant. And when you are seeking him and thanking him and showing your gratitude on a daily basis, and you know he knows, and you know he loves you, and you know he's there. It is just a tremendous, tremendous thing. So I want to encourage you guys to just continue, regardless what's going on in your life, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, to continue knowing that God is there, God knows your needs, and he does love you, and to seek that relationship. Like I said earlier, 
you know, us stepping out and doing what is needed um, in a preparedness mindset and, and then seeking him and putting those two things together really creates an amazing, amazing um, situation because we are active. We are, we are acting upon his desires and we are, are working in that relationship and it just brings together a really awesome, awesome combination. So this says, in case you were wondering, God knows. Psalms 34. <laughs> Chad, you just shared Psalms 34, did you not? Yes, you did. Okay, Psalms 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. Amen. Amen, Chad. For months I prayed the same prayers, yet they seemed to go unanswered. So each time I spoke to God, I made sure he hadn't forgotten by reminding him constantly of my needs and desires. I felt he had a right to know. I am still anxiously waiting for him to act and that, honestly, I was getting a little annoyed at his seeming lack of swift action and attention. Have mercy. As I laid my head to rest one night after yet another exhausting, discouraging day, I finally asked the questions we all may be secretively tempted to ask when our circumstances don't improve and our problems keep piling up. Do you see me, Lord? Do you even hear what I'm saying? Do you know what's happening? Then moments later, I drifted off to sleep. A few hours into the quiet darkness of the night, I abruptly awoke. There were no loud, creepy sounds coming from another room and no startling thunder or lightning outside that would have in interrupted my sleep. Total silence except for a persistent musical rhythm dancing through my mind. I recognized the tune, but hadn't heard it in quite some time, so it took me my sleepy mind a couple minutes to figure it out. When the lyrics of the song finally came flowing into my mind, tears filled my eyes. The song title, He Knows by Jeremy Camp. He knows every hurt and every sting. He has walked the suffering. Let your burdens come undone. Lift your eyes up to the one who knows. He knows. God had gently pulled me out of a deep sleep because he had something simple yet so important to tell me. He does see me, hear my prayers, and care. And above all, he knows. My heart quickened at the thought of hearing from my Heavenly Father in such a sweet and gentle way. In the midst of running the universe, God saw fit to remind me that just because I didn't yet know how he was at work in my situations didn't mean he didn't know exactly what was happening. How awesome is that to hear it said like that? In the midst of running the universe, God saw fit to remind me. See, he loves us. It's very personal. As the sun began to rise, I reached my Bible, reached for my Bible and looked for verses about God's attentiveness to our lives. I came across today's key verse that reminds us, even when we think God isn't watching, he sees us. When he, we think he isn't listening, he hears our prayers. Scripture tells us, Hebrews 4.13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. There isn't a day or a tear that God doesn't know about. He sees whatever we're going through and he knows. God's word also reassures us the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. Psalms 34, 17. God knows every spoken, every prayer spoken, and he hears the cries of our hearts. The struggle to believe God sees us often signifies a problem within our hearts, not his heart for us. And yet doubts don't make us broken believers, just broken people living in a world where things break our hearts and God's. But there's no greater joy than seeing throughout scripture that the creator of the universe deeply cares about what we're going through. Hope and peace can be ours when we believe that in God's timing and in his ways, he will answer. This late night encounter with God helped me refocus on my faith and remember, although he may not have answered my prayers, I can trust that he knows. If you've ever wondered if God cares about what you're going through, take comfort today in letting yourself believe he does. And then it says, Lord, help me remember you not only know what is happening in my life, but you have a plan. Fill me with peace and the ability to trust you as I wait. In Jesus' name, amen. So how cool is that? 
you know, God, God truly, truly cares for us. He knows our circumstances. And, you know, he is always doing a million things. Like it said, he's running the universe, but he's doing a million things for you in the background of your day-to-day -day life and planning for things for your future that you can't even begin to fathom. And he does know and he does care. And, you know, we ask for things and we wonder why we don't get them sometimes. But he knows what we need. He knows what will best suit us. And he may not always give us our exact desires, but he will give us something bigger and better than what we could ever imagine. And I say that a lot, but guys, I've walked that out. I've seen that. I've lived that. And I no longer ask for, for I don't ask for material things. Um, my relationship is so strong with him that I don't even have desires for material things. I have desires for relationship. Not just with him, but with my family and my friends. I want that relationship. I want that closeness. Where maybe in my past, in my younger self, I would have been seeking material things to meet my needs. But no longer are material things holding a value for me. Um, and that's why I encourage you guys to really embrace a relationship. A relationship with him that will change your heart. Uh, open your heart and ultimately will will enhance your other relationships you have with family and friends because of the deepness of his touch in our lives i hope that makes sense but um it's amazing that the relationship i have with god makes everything else just fall together and come together and I don't find myself missing anything in my life. I just feel very content. I feel very happy. I feel very joyful. And I was even more joyful when that heart showed up on that cabinet yesterday because, um, like I said, yesterday the mountain man was really overwhelmed with everything. And um, sometimes in those situations it can be intense uh, because... Of how he handles those situations and um, our my personality is very different and I am always praying in those situations for him because I know that he's just struggling so I pray for him and and it just always seems that in those situations God shows me a heart of one sort or another to let me know that all's gonna be good and that he knows and that he's hurt me and that he's um, helping my man you know sometimes words spoken um, aren't the things that are going to help and you learn that when you you know like in this situation I learned that knowing how his makeup and his needs and and what he's dealing with men process things different than women do so when he's in that frustrated state he's also beating himself up so I can't say anything, I know that, that will alter um, his, his current placement, his current mood. But my prayers can change a lot. And that is where I focus and what I focus on. So when we learn the power of our prayers and the power of that relationship, we can really help our loved ones in a great way too by um, our grace, our mercy, our love, and our devotion for prayer and that relationship we have with Papa. So, hope that makes sense. And I hope you guys find some kind of um, encouragement in that because we all go through the good, bad, and the ugly. We all experience tough times. We experience amazing times too. And the more we focus on that relationship, regardless what we're walking through, um, the more we'll feel his presence and the more we'll know he knows. Because sometimes you do, you, I guess you need to feel that and know that he knows that you're communicating and that he's, um, that he's there and that he's listening, just like this said. But it's also amazing to me to see how God works. I've experienced many things like what this has spoken um, today, you know, with my healing and with my prior to surgery. Did you guys just see that butterfly? <laughs> it came right in here, but I don't know if it came in the camera. 
two, uh, three things that this shared also today is um, Matthew 6, 8, which I read, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Psalms 139, 2 through 4, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. And 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. He knows. And he knows our current circumstances. He knows what is happening on, in this world. And um, we need to just hold fast to his truth. There is nothing more... Um, comforting in my opinion than reading his word and knowing he's there knowing he cares so let me see if you guys commented anymore okay Shelly says copper is okay it is nickel and cobalt okay and Laura says amen yes so those are my thoughts for today I do need to jump off of here because I've got a very large and long to-do list, but I did not want to miss this time with you guys. I love this time just as much as you guys do. It's very renewing for me, and I knew God was wanting me to tell you guys that he knows, that he always knows. So whatever you guys are walking out today, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, just know he knows. And if he doesn't seem to be answering your prayers, know that he is working something in the background that's going to be amazing as you move forward. You've seen my family walk through a very tremendous valley, but you've also seen us walk out the other side. And our faith has never faltered. Um, we trust in him. We believe and know. I shouldn't say believe. I just know that he's going to take care of me and my family. And that is a huge comfort. And when you have that and you start just trusting what his plan is instead of trying to expect yours to happen um, there's a lot of peace in that so just remember that but I'm going to say a prayer Papa I just thank you for this beautiful weather this beautiful day thank you for all the things that you are doing in each of our lives thank you for blessing us so intensely and the abundance that you've been providing thank you for this time that we can all get together and uh, share are in fellowship and share in community and uh, just support one another and thank you for your presence as always thank you for loving us thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives I ask that you uh, help Chad to find the perfect house for he and his children I ask that you be with Shelly's foot today and heal that uh, I ask that you uh, continue to put your healing hands on Diana's shoulder and just heal her. I ask that you please be with Deb and her community and area up there with the fires and just protect them and keep them safe and just love on them. May they feel your presence today. And I ask that you uh, just keep your loving arms around everyone present, everyone watching the replay. I ask that you just continue to give comfort and peace to my mountain man and just thank you for blessing with him with his abilities and thank you for blessing me with him keep your hand on my boy and just keep him safe allow him to have a great flight today and uh, just continue to help him in his walk there at moody may he be a light and uh, be with terry and his wife june and uh, just uh, be with all those watching be with all those that are being persecuted for you and uh just may we be a light and life and love in this crazy world. And may we just have and hold tight to the amazing relationship that you offer us. And thank you for always knowing. Thank you for knowing our needs. Thank you for providing. And thank you for the loving abundance you pro provide in our lives. And I just ask that you keep everyone safe from now until next week. Uh, let them feel your presence and... Uh, be there for those in need and just thank you and we love you and ask all this in your holy and precious name of Jesus amen okay guys <laughs> all right I wish you guys a fabulous day and I 
will be continuing to pray for you and I covet your prayers. Thank you for praying for my family as we walk this journey out. It is definitely late in the season to be starting to build a house, but I know we're not the only ones. I've been ran out yesterday at the post office and saw quite a few uh, other people doing the same thing. So, you know, it's quite the blessing to be able to uh, be able to build this house and use the skills and the talents that God's given us and to have the strength and ability. I am praising him greatly that I am able to do what I am able to do right now and the fact that I am starting to feel renewed and uh, better health right now. I know he's preparing my body for this and I know that through this process I am healthier and stronger and have been uh, definitely detoxing through this. So God is good. He knows guys, he knows. So stay safe, stay well, continue to build on your relationship. I love you all and I will see you next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Standard Time, Lord willing. Uh, and if not, I will message and let you know otherwise. But see you next week. Love you guys. God bless.